This is gonna be a three part series focusing on chiller minimum flow control, which is usually an issue during low load conditions when the chiller can quite easily trip on low flow. This first part, we're gonna be focusing on what is the variable speed drive controlling and what is the bypass valve controlling? Because generally there are two different ways to do it. And in this video, we're gonna explain, I'm gonna to prove to you which is the right way and why the other way, which a lot of people do still do, in my opinion, is the wrong way. Now, today's video is specifically around primary only pumping shorter systems because with primary secondary pumping systems, um, because you have the decoupler and the water can always get around, we don't have any problems like that. So if you're working on primary secondary systems, this is not relevant. Um, the bypass valve that we have with primary secondary systems does something else. It's got nothing to do with chiller minimum flow control. Now, just to start off at the start of this video, the pump modulates to maintain system pressure and the bypass valve modulates to maintain minimum flow through the chiller. It's not the other way around. A lot of people use the bypass valve to control system pressure and they use the pump's variable speed drive to maintain the minimum flow through the evaporator and that is not the right way to do it. Now, a lot of you will be sitting there now thinking, well, that's rubbish because we've been using the bypass valve to control system pressure for 10 years. Like I've seen it work 20 times. So the focus of this video really is gonna be to prove to you why that doesn't work and how, when it appears to work, why it's still not really working. So let's run through the two ways that it can work. So we'll start off with, in my opinion, the correct way where the pump controls system pressure and the bypass valve controls minimum flow through chiller. So if we think about our, our building and our load in the field is decreasing, as the load is decreasing, the system pressure is increasing and it goes above set point. So the system pressure goes above say 200 kPa and the pump slows down. The two port valves close, the suspension goes up, pump slows down. Suspension goes up, pump slows down. So it keeps doing that and the pump slowing down, pump slowing down. Now I've got to keep in mind that at that point, we're saving a lot of power because if we're not in a full load condition where it's 35 degrees outside and we have both chillers running, both pumps running at design speed, the bypass closed and all the valves fully open, if we're not in that situation, it means that our pump will be running slower, slower, slower and saving energy. And generally, if you slow a pump down that's going to 100% speed, if you slow it down 10% to 90%, you will save around 30% of power. So it's a lot of savings when you slow a pump down from full speed down 10%. So the objective here is, and that's why we have two port valves, we have two port valves because we want to slow the pump down. So we slow the pump down, slow the pump down, slow the pump down, and the load's decreasing, and it's decreasing, it's decreasing, and you know all those air handling units, their valves are say, you know, 30% open, 15%, 10% open. And eventually it gets to a point where the pump is slowed down to its minimum speed, or around there, and the flow to the chiller is now starting to get quite low, and it could trip. At that point, the bypass valve cracks open, and more water comes around the circuit, and more water goes to the chiller. So the bypass valve then opens, 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 opens. So as our two ports, a few AHU valves have completely closed. Um, those ones are closed, those ones are closed. These ones are like 10% open. At that point, our pump's at minimum speed, sort of, and our bypass valve is just modulating the whole time, maintaining the minimum flow through the, maintaining the minimum flow through the chiller. So that is, in my opinion, how it's supposed to work. Now let's run through the second scenario where the control is reversed. And let's see if we can try and work out why that doesn't work. So same scenario, we've got our, our cooling valves, they're all open out there, and the pump's looking at the minimum flow of the chiller and the bypass valve is controlling system pressure. So as the load in the field starts to decrease, the system pressure goes up above the set point of 200 kPa and the bypass opens to maintain the pressure. And the load drops and the valves close the pressure goes up, the bypass valves close to maintain the system pressure. Now the first thing before we go anywhere is that we're opening the bypass straight away. Like as soon as we aren't on design load, as soon as we aren't then the valves start closing and the pressure starts going up, we're immediately opening the bypass valve. That's the first thing we're doing. And that is not a good idea for quite a few reasons. The first reason is it wastes energy because our pumps are pumping water out there that isn't required 
and we're bypassing that background. The second thing is chillers don't particularly like to have um, cold water coming back to them. So that bypass valve opening is not a good idea. Um, so let's, let's keep going. So as we are, the two ports are closing off and the system pressure is increasing, the bypass valve is opening, 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 opening. Now, our flow through the chiller is still good. We're not anywhere near tripping. Now I want to just stop for a minute there. I want you to park that thought. I don't want to talk about something else for a second. Um, so I want to talk about how chill water systems are um, balanced. So what happens is when we're in a construction phase, we install the new chillers, the new pumps and everything. The first thing that happens is that the, the chiller commissioning technician comes to you and says, hey, like, please open up all the chiller valves fully. So you go on the BMS and you open up all the chiller valves fully. And then he goes along and if he needs two chillers to run for the full load, he turns the two chillers off and he turns the two chiller primary pumps on. He turns the pumps on and he ramps them up. So we have two pumps ramping up and he closes the bypass valve fully and all the valves are fully open. And then the chiller commissioning, or not the mechanical commissioning tech, runs around and makes sure that you've got the design flow rate through every single chiller coil. All the AHUs, all the fan coils, all the chilled beams, he runs around there and he measures the flow. And if it's, if it's too much, he closes it down, closes it down. And, and as he's balancing this all, balancing it all out, so that the correct design flows at all the coils, um, he comes back and he adjusts the pump speed, adjusts the pump speed. So he gets to a point where it's completely balanced for a design day. So if it was 35 degrees Celsius outside and all the chiller valves were fully open, in theory, we'd have 24 degrees Celsius on the floors. It's a, it's a pure design day and that considers all the heat loads and the zoning and everything. It's all balanced, perfect. So at that point, the uh, mechanical commission check fills in his commissioning sheets. He's very excited about that. He's done his work, running out of time. Handover is probably like in two or three weeks. Um, the consultant comes to site and witnesses it. The consultant goes out to a few of the air handling units, does a few spot checks. Do you have the right flow? Yes, 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 yes. Goes back to the, the chillers. Do you have the right flow to the chiller? Yes, yes, yes. The two chillers are good. The whole thing is balanced. At that point, it gets signed off. It all gets switched into auto. And now the BMS guys start their commissioning. The point that I'm really exaggerating here is that with chill water systems and hot water systems, actually all systems, we only really mechanically commission them and balance them in a design condition. We don't actually do any mechanical balancing or commissioning in low load conditions. So when you go into auto and you're controlling, everything's fine. But when you start to get to low load conditions, that's when problems start to occur. So let's just jump back to where we were before that. So we were sitting there, we had the, the two ports were closing off, the pressure was going up, the bypass was opening, the bypass was opening, the bypass was opening. At some point in real low load conditions, this is like a, not summer, this is a, like a shoulder season day. It's quite cool outside. We're at really good economy cycle on the air handling units. This chill water is just topping up maybe the north facade of the glass where the sun is here in the southern hemisphere. Or you've got some comms rooms or something, something like that. So it's a real low load condition. So what happens now is that flow, the chiller starts to drop. And let's say, um, the, the minimum flow control is 10, uh, 10 liters per second. So if it goes below 10 liters per second, the pumps are gonna speed up because the bypass valve is controlling system pressure and the chiller primary pump variable speed drive is controlling the flow to the chiller. So we see this flow coming down, uh, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10. As it goes below 10, the speed drive starts to speed up, of course, it's a PRD loop, speeds up, speeds up, speeds up. This is the part, this is, this is the very important part here. If the two ports are sitting there and the bypass is sitting there at a position, you can ramp that pump up to 100% if you want. It will not get more flow through the chiller. The pump will pump harder and harder and harder and harder, but the water has nowhere to go. The two ports have closed off and the bypass is sitting somewhere holding system pressure. It's at 200 kPa, it's, that's correct. But the pump is pushing the water that has nowhere to go. It's just going up, up against there. The only way that you can possibly get more water through the chiller is to open the bypass valve. So you open the bypass valve and whoosh, a whole lot of water comes through and the chiller, the flow of the chiller increases and the pump slows down. So it's really important to realize that 
using the pump to control flow through the chiller, it's not a good idea. Because what happens when you're watching it, and this, this normally happens on that perfect day where it's just the right amount of low load. And um, like in the perfect world, as that the bypass valve was opening and opening and opening, more water's coming through, more water's coming through. It's, it's actually indirectly helping to maintain the flow through the chiller. But you will get to a point, just that perfect day where the bypass valve is open enough to maintain the system pressure and it doesn't hydraulically perfectly balance and match to what the chiller needs in this low flow condition. So what happens is you're sitting there and you'll see the, the flow drop nine and the pump will speed up, eight and the pump will speed up. This pump goes up, 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 up and the flow drops, the chiller trips. That's why it trips. So you cannot use the chilled water primary pump to control the flow to the chiller. It doesn't work all the time. Um, it'll work a lot of the time because a lot of times you'll be lucky that the amount that you open the bypass just happens to be helping with the chiller. But it'll get to that little spot one day where it's just not quite right. Where the relationship between the system pressure and that and the relationship with the flow to the chiller doesn't quite match on that day. Now, some of you are hopefully have convinced you. There'll still be some of you that are thinking, you know what, Bryce, that sort of makes sense, but I've seen this work. 20 times in the last 10 years, and you would have seen it work. And let's run through a little scenario of why you may have seen it work. Other than the fact that normally it sort of can, it can actually work. What happens is um, that day when the chiller trips and you're sitting there or someone's sitting there and the chiller's tripped and you, the first thing we're gonna say is, okay, look, yeah, like, you know, we just need to tune the loops. It just needs some tuning. We always say that. Um, now, there, there was a video before where we spoke about what does tuning mean? That was more energy efficiency type tuning, but this tuning is you know, traditional core tuning, PID lip tuning. But um, what I was gonna say here is that we go there and we start tuning the loop. So we start playing with the PID parameters and we're trying to tune it and it still can't get to control very well. Uh, it trips again and we can't get to work. And I can tell you right now what happens most of the time because this arrangement doesn't actually work. Like you can try and tune that as best you can it just mechanically and hydraulically, it's not gonna work. So um, what we tend to do is we start to raise the chiller minimum flow set points up a bit and up a bit. So we raise it from 10 meters per second to 12 to 14 to 15, 16. We raise it and as we're raising it, we're creating a bigger buffer between what we're trying to control to and where it's actually gonna trip. And at some point, some of your PID loop tuning and you raising the set point, you'll eventually get to a point where it won't actually trip anymore. Because although you've got the wrong strategy, there'll be enough of a time delay between when you should have controlled it and when it's gonna actually trip on the chiller's safety, that big gap and that big time delay, it allows you to luckily, the bypass valve to catch up eventually. The issue with that is that the reasons why we have two port control valves and variable speed drives is that we want to have a variable primary pumping system. We don't want a constant volume primary pumping system. And as soon as you reduce this limit, you are sort of reducing the amount of variable flow that we should have. So instead of controlling between say 50 liters per second and 10 liters per second, nice variable flow, slowing the pumps down, saving energy, we're now really just working up at the top here. So I think that the jobs where we have this situation with the pump controlling the flow through the chiller and the, the bypass valve, the system pressure, and it's working, it's working because we've probably reduced the amount of variable primary pumping available to us and we're not saving enough energy. If you just reverse the logic around to the correct way, it'll work much better. So now that we have the control strategy the right way around, um, the following second part and possibly a third part to this little series, we'll talk more about some of the secondary sort of control things that we don't do that well or are sometimes wrong that cause problems with the chiller. Now they won't they won't necessarily directly relate to the chiller tripping, but when you have the software the wrong way around or even the right way around and you get three or four of these other little miscellaneous things going on at the same time, it makes it quite difficult to diagnose why the chiller is tripping. All right guys, like usual, um, like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and I will see you next week. Stay safe out there.